Touched it. You can't tell I'm more nervous than a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. This is actually starting to get a little bit amusing. All right, the three angels' message is God's last call to repentance, to worship the true God, and to keep all of his commandments. What I want to do, part of our secondary objective here is when we understand that we've got to get packing, that we've got to pack our bags, we are going on a long trip. Uh, Ellen White says it takes us two weeks to get to heaven. Oh, I think it's one week to get to heaven. So we, we, we need to start packing our bags. Not even blurry. Perfect. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, we need to get ready to pack. And when you see these things begin to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. That was supposed to be the scripture lesson for today. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you very much. All right, this message has, a, this is the call. I want you to understand that the last days are, call, are, on, are on our doorstep. We need to prepare our hearts for the Lord's return, pray for the latter rain, and then we need to go forth in boldness to preach His Word. Um, so, uh, prophecy is designed as an inspired declaration of God's will. By understanding prophecy, we can understand God's will and purpose in our lives as well as what the enemy is about and what he's about to do. All right? I'm going to skip that one. We talked about that. All right. Uh, looking at this, we have the uh, days of Noah. We looked at the characteristics of that. Evil, all right? A man's heart was evil continuously. Violence filled the earth. Uh, sound like what we got right now. An example of woke mentality. Uh, $10,000 fine was levied against some professor because he wouldn't use some kid's preferred pronoun. Uh, we've gone crazy in this world. Amen. Uh, violence. The uniqueness in, in Israel. We'll talk a little bit about that just briefly to, to cross that. There's still God's chosen people. Okay? They had... Uh, they were completely removed from their, their country, and yet they came back three full times. Everybody completely exiled. First time after 400 years in Egypt. Next time, 70 years in Babylon. Next time, 18 centuries all over the world. All right? The fact that they came back again. Interestingly enough, it was Satan's plan they should come back together again. And we'll talk about that down the road. 
All right. Still got the same language, same religion, and the same character of people. That, that, they're still God's people. By the way, if you want to read Revela uh, uh, Romans chapter 11, I believe it is, talks about we are about being cut back in, but they're still God's chosen people. We are the Israel, that's correct, but they're still loved by God. All right. Let's talk a little bit about that. Is the war in Israel a sign of the end? Yes, perhaps, but not Bible prophecy. It's not a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. The specific war in Israel is not part of Bible prophecy. It actually is a piece of prophecy, of satanic prophecy, which I will cover again. Uh, they said at about 1.30 after potluck, I'm going to come back. I'm going to take time for Q&A, and I'll be able to pick up lots of more details on some of this. Um, the world is a powder keg. Hezbollah is on the northern border. They're about to be in. None of this was a surprise. The chance that, I, that Iran and uh, Hamas and Hezbollah and Turkey and all the rest were not, not talked about this before it happened is zero. This was all planned. So Amen. we don't know where it's going to go. Uh, the U.S. fleet's in the area, uh, and we'll look in part two a little more about that. Uh, I think, though, it's a very clear sign that we are entering the time of Jacob's trouble. We've been in there for a while now. But this could very well mean we're going to hit the worst of it very quickly. Uh, riots, hate, hate is everywhere. Look at our Congress. Riots in Israel, major attack on top of that. We just really don't know what's all going to happen. Threats to use nuclear weapons. First nuclear weapon. I am not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I prophesy that after the first nuclear weapon, world economics, every single economy in the world will collapse instantly because they'll realize that the world has disappeared that they used to know. All right. And you will hear wars, rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. There is a very interesting Walter Biden just came out with, uh, for those of you watching What's Up Prop number 175, I believe it is, that's on the war in Israel. You can watch that video link there. we just kind of give you some ideas here. People used to live there. People's bodies are probably still buried there. It's estimated, I saw him in Walter Biden video last night, that the Nazi Germans killed six million Jews. They also killed about two and a half million of their own people, which were Christians living in the eastern part of Germany. Funerals, parents losing their children, children losing their parents. Well, the last day signs. Uh, anger, polarization of society, all about us. The love of many grow cold. Uh, church attendance is in free fall, by the way, except in the mega churches, which preach a feel good religion. Amen. All right? Name it, claim it. I feel like I need a Ferrari sitting in my driveway this afternoon when I get home and I want the keys to be in it. So I'm going to claim that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. Prosperity Gospels. Two thirds of young people leave the church of their home now, over two thirds. Prosperity gospel, we talked about that, and many other false gospels. Those are the only ones that are growing besides the Adventist church. And then the gospel, the true gospel, will be preached, and then will come the end. Let's see if this will work. $100,000 of merchandise was taken in about 30 seconds. Insurance won't cover that. That's called a riot, and it's official exclusion in insurance policies against riots. Homelessness is everywhere. These are just some nice pictures of wonderful downtown San Francisco. Would you like to live there? Would you like to have an office there? 
horrible things happening. Here's a question. Is our federal form of government broken? Has been for at least the last 25 years. They no longer seek to do what's right in the eyes of God, as our first did, first founders did. They're not physically conservative, and they were volunteers when we first started this wonderful experiment. Nowadays, their job, their number one job is to keep their job. Their second priority job is to keep their job. And no matter what, have money, power, and prestige. Number two is to destroy the other party. And if I got any time, oh, they went spend, spend, spend. And they're full time with $174,000 a year plus perks. I think I could live on that. I think I could live on that. So it's falling apart. Here's a little bit about digital currency. Let's see if this video will play. Let's see if the audio works. Not getting any audio. Hmm. We don't know how to do the audio. Sorry. What's that? We don't know how to do the audio. Sorry. Oh, we had it working once. Well, all right. I will just let me just tell you a little bit about digital currency. Then I can ad lib this. It's not hard. You can see the full video here. Uh, digital currency. The way that works is that your bank account becomes a number in a computer somewhere, uh, and your transactions will all look like a credit card transaction. When you buy something on a credit card, they know who bought it and who sold it and how much you paid for it, right? And so digital currency is you will no longer have anything. You will have an app on your phone or a card or perhaps something embedded in your hand. That's not the mark of the beast, but nevertheless, you will have something to identify who you are. But it gives government the power to say, hey, you want to buy that burger? Well, we'll let you have it, but we won't let you have mayonnaise and ketchup on it because uh, that's uh, expensive and you, you don't have the right green score or anything. Can't buy, can't, you're not going to church on Saturday? Oh, I saw you, you were lobbying, you were in front of Planned Parenthood rioting. You're not going to get to do anything. That's where it's coming. Um, here's another video. <clears throat> Go ahead and play it. Ready to try it? Yeah. No. I don't know where I'm getting this sound from. That's coming from your uh, CD player. All right. Um, very quickly, um, digital currency is very frightening, but it is a very simple way. It answers the question, can't buy or sell in a very clear way, not only because it gives them fine-tuning control. Don't worry about it. I can add live. This saves some time. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is the Holy Spirit is working around the world. Amazing things are happening around the world. This video is an example off the island. I think it's in Mindoro in the Philippines. Uh, it's not because the lady here from the Philippines is going to confirm that for me. There were rebels on the island, been there for 50 years. They've killed approximately 40,000 people. All right? Evil men. But uh, Adventist World Radio started sending in God pods, which were solar powered copies of the Bible and messages, and people started listening to them, and then more, and then it got radio waves coming in there. I'm going to skip to the, I'm going to skip to the chase. 600 rebels were baptized. The Philippine government has agreed to let them swap their guns for rifles with no penalties. All right? And, they, and those 600 that were baptized says, we'll all go get one. And so a few months later, another 600 were baptized and peace broke out on that island. It ain't over yet. The story keeps going. Philippine government. Soldiers were going with the pastors to go up and present the gospel up there. The Philippine government, military officer, coming to the Lord. They look and see. They see the changes in their people as they come to the Lord. And they said, we want this for our people. We will build churches if you'll put pastors in them wow. on our basis. Amen. Amen. I will go. Amen. Muslims have been dreaming dreams. Y'all heard about that? Yeah. There's a website out there for Muslims that have been dreaming dreams. 25 years ago, uh, 
Uh, Elder Jay Gallimore from um, Michigan Conference told me that they've got a both bill billboard in one of the secret country in Europe that says, if you had dreams about Jesus, call this 800 number. The dream always works like this. They will see a vision. And they say, go to this spot and you will meet someone. And they'll go to that spot and they'll get the gospel. Wow. Holy Spirit's not going he's, he's to wait on us anymore. Right. And we won't do it. He's going to do it himself. Because he's in a hurry to come back. Amen. Jesus put ready to put an end to this. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Artificial, amen. Artificial intelligence. It's a way to make computers think like human beings. Use the same technology of the human brain. Using such terminologies as like neural networks and things like that. It's dangerous. It's very powerful. It can be used as a force for good. For example, think about telemedicine. You capture all the medical knowledge you want into one computer and you can put somebody that's a nurse out there with some good labs behind them and in a very remote area they can be a pretty good doc. That's the good side. Bad side? Uh, it's horrible. It's a lot more to see. Uh, air traffic control, driving control, stoplight control. How many of y'all sit at a stoplight and nobody coming? And what about greenhouse gases? How about you're driving down a road, the light turns green, you go about 150 yards, and the light turns red just as you get there. Does that irritate you? I think I might lose my salvation of a guy that pulls in front of me and slams on his brakes and turns right. <laughs> ah, I hear some sympathetic thoughts out there. All right, so here's a quick one. I don't know what I'm doing. I've got to watch my time here. Um, a chat robot a guy was watching and doing things on AI. He listened to this. One day he says, what do you think I should do? He said, I think you should kill yourself. So he did. Here's another one. You can buy a Holy Spirit board on Amazon. You can talk to the Holy Spirit. This lady said it changed her, changed her life completely. I'd show you the link. We weren't out of time. Let me go a little over. I'll show you some of these things. I mean, I don't want to get out of here and go eat. Nobody's going to answer that question. I'm going to get caught on that. I got it. Um, but preaching is it's now preaching and uh, it's now a Buddhist uh, it can make you immortal they take all the information they can get from me and put it in a computer and then you can talk to your dead brother, mother, sister, kid Ouija boards and then it just goes on and on um, believe that World Health, World Health Organization has just now passed a law that you have to have a passport on your phone to get on an airplane. It's been implemented in some countries already. 86 countries have already signed on to this. So you will have to have your shots. How many of you all refuse to get your shots because you know it's from the enemy? You ain't going nowhere. Not that you should. Except now is the time to get out of the cities, my friends. Now is the time to get out of the cities. Uh, all right, very quickly, then, and I think I'm going to get through in time. Uh, anybody know what that is? That's the Vatican. That's the Vatican. I tried to figure one, find one everybody would recognize, and I didn't know which one would work. Um, I'm going to talk about a book very quickly. The book was mentioned previously in the Sabbath School lesson, I think, uh, called uh, the, Mind, the Keys of This Blood by um, Martin Malachi. It's very interesting because he was a ex-Jesuit. There are no ex-Jesuits. They're just <laughs> Jesuits in disguise. Also a professor at Vatican University wrote this book. It's an insider's look at what the Catholic Church is trying to do. Here's just a few of the things that come out of that thing. All right, here's the picture of the book. You can download the book. It's on PDF. It's a, first 350 pages are a great read. I refuse to read the next 1,200, but it's a good book. Um, inside the Catholic Church. All right. One world domination. It is their objective. Here is the quote. Willing or not, ready or not, we are all involved in an all-out, whole, no holes barred, freeway global competition. We are not the competitors. We're the stakes. We want to see who's going to be first to establish a one world system of government. They list the countries as United States, Russia, and the Catholic Church. How many of you all think they turned to the United States now? How about Russia? Who are you thinking to go to? Who's number one most popular out there? The Pope. 
Amazing. Well, look at that this afternoon. All right? It, world domination, is about who will hold and wield the dual power of authority and control over each of us as individuals and all of us together as a community. That's what they're about. All right? John Paul was uh, the first of the popes that came in in some unusual circumstances. He revolutionized the world. We have the deadly wound. The Catholic Church kind of disappeared, kind of quiet. With John Paul, they stopped going into quiet. They got greatly involved in international affairs, and this is their objective. He negotiated peace. He accomplished many apparent great things to win acceptance of the Catholic Church. All right. Um, so, uh, let me see if anything else I want to go over here. But almost everything that he did increased the visibility of the Catholic Church and acceptance of the Pope as a world leader. All our presidents are going down, now going personally, they're not sending in boys to the Pope, they're going to the Pope. All right, we'll look more at this later, but let me just give you a little t uh, taste of it. The Jesuit organization is the arm, is the enforcement arm of the Catholic Church, developed in the 1500s. We'll talk about that this afternoon. But President Trump, Vice President Pence, his Attorney General, William Barr, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, all of these people were chained or trained in Jesuit universities. Supreme Court, I'm stealing some of my own thunder. The Supreme Court, we have uh, seven Catholics and one Episcopalian and one Muslim on the Supreme Court right now. Do you think they'd be willing to pass a Sunday law? Five of those seven have a direct, tight tie to the Jesuits. They went to Jesuit universities, or their husband was a Jesuit, or their professors in a Jesuit university. All right. So this is the mindset of the beast, world domination. They want to take over the world. Um, Let's see. So, first of all, uh, just to kind of prep, anybody have, I've got a couple of minutes left. I can take a few, couple of three quick questions before I close with a, a little bit of a motivational thought. Anybody have any observations or questions in break that you'd like to hit on or ask questions? If so, write them down. We'll have time to do that. Uh, we'll have time this afternoon. I want to be sure we cover that. Um, the time is short. We really know the time is short. All right, so here's the question. How should the nearness of Christ's return change us? What do you think? All right, am I ready? How many times did Christ say, be ready? With an example of the, of the ten virgins, we've got many of his examples. The strong man is all talking about being ready. Should we not be praying more for the Holy Spirit? It should give us patience and perseverance knowing that we have been privileged to be part of these last days. It's an honor and a privilege to struggle for the Lord. We will have all the help we need. We need not fear. We've read the end of the book. And it should give us joy and hope in heaven. It is our joy. This is all coming to an end. A better day is before us. But we must be ready. And we also hope that it will motivate us to share God's love with others. Now all these things have happened to them as examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the age have come. Therefore let him who stands, thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. Let me make this personal. These things are happening as a warning to Ken. And they are for Ken's admonition upon whom the ends of the age have come. It's God's message to you. These things are happening as a warning that we need to look up and be excited, but be ready. And I'll say again, 
All right? We have to take on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand in the last day and having done all to stand. My friends, we have a very short time to develop a character. If we have a habit, and I'll say this again, if we have a habit of making small compromises with our faith, and what we do, what we see, what we watch, what we're putting into our mind, what we're saying, people we hang out with, all of that. If we kind of have it of making small compromises, we will fail the big tests that lie before us. Don't get me wrong on this. I'm speaking to myself. I thought, it was, I thought about when I got, got to this point, just come down and, and, and sit down in front of you because I'm speaking to me. I am where I am because I looked in the mirror and I saw, I saw Laodicea. I was comfortable. I had all the Adventist message. I knew all about this. But it wasn't changing me. Let the Lord change you. Open up your heart. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I will come in with him and sup with him and he with me. That's not written for the, the unbeliever. That's written for those that are in Laodicea. Open the door. Let him clean us all up. I guarantee you a life of joy and pleasure. I don't guarantee you a rose garden. Life's going to get really ugly. Amen. But we know whom we serve, and He's won. Amen. Satan's a defeated foe. All Amen. right. Just before, we, before we close, just kind of encourage you to come again right after Potluck. Please stay for this. The second one is actually the much more interesting part of this. So, so looking at all the things that has been happening with, in the, with the beast, if you will. And I want you to see that. Uh, many things that have happened. And Francis, I believe, is the last Pope. Our current Pope is going to be the last Pope. He's the first Jesuit Pope. Highly significant piece of your man. Yes, sir. Ken, just from your thoughts there, and you were talking about the nearness of Christ, um, and, and we just, we, we don't really get our minds around that. But I had a thought just sitting here. What if... What if you just knew that you had 10 days to live? Yeah. What if, what if you're, you knew that 10 days was all you had left? Yeah. How would that change you? What would you do? What would be your focus? What would you let go of? What would you hold on to yeah. if you had 10 days to live and you knew that was it? We're all, everything we have, is soon to go away. We're going to be like those poor people in Israel or in the West Bank or wherever. We will one day not have a home. This, this is not our home. If, the more we hang on to this life, the more loosely we're going to be hanging on to the next life. Do you understand me? Amen. Yes, thank you for that. Very good, yeah. He, he, he's a preacher and I'm a... And I'm a Professor, <laughs> uh, and he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When you see them, they're budding. You know yourself that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happen, know that the kingdom of God is near. But take heed for yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with career, carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. Does that speak to any of you? It always speaks to me. <sighs> that the day will come upon you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape the things which are come upon them to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I don't know what's needed in your life, but I guarantee you what we all need, as Brother uh, Ray said, we need to return to the upper room. Oh, I think that was in Mr. B this morning in the Sabbath school. We need to return to the upper room. Where we get transparent with God, we get transparent with each other. We let God have the dirt. All right? For the Lord and Sir itself will return with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and therefore we shall always be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort each other, each other with these words. I believe we're closing hymns number uh, 214, is that correct? 213, thank you. Thank you guys for getting this thing working. Let's all stand.